Welcome back to the boat restoration series where I'm converting a 1940 seaplane tender into an off-grid liveaboard. So after a long bleak winter, the varnish peeled up and rainwater worked its way up underneath all of the varnish. Stepping below deck, I discovered many roof leaks in both the wheelhouse cabin roof and the fore cabin. To discover this after putting in so much work, it was really heartbreaking to see that the roof had failed and uh, to see that just all that my hard earned work was, was undone. So thinking back over how I could have prevented this from, from happening, why did, did my work fail, why did the roof leak? And, and essentially I think it comes down to the fact that I varnished over my Sikaflex work. If I was to first do the varnishing on, on the roof planking and then grout your grooves, grout, grout your roof planking with, uh, with Sikaflex or your sealant, and that way it doesn't allow for any anything to lift and I think that would prevent it. That would have prevented it from happening. You know, you don't have your varnish over your Sikaflex, um, so it's not going to lift or peel while your while your wood moves and uh, contracts. You know, with, with the climate, with the weather, with the changes in the weather, and then the temperature. That would obviously make it a bit more tricky for when you actually have to do any upkeep with the Sikaflex. You'll do any repairs there. If you spring a leak, then you're going to have to dig out any old Sikaflex, uh, where that leak is, trace it back to where that leak be entering, and, and fix it which isn't too much of an issue, but then if you want to do any any varnish upkeep, you know, sand down your layer of varnish, top that up, you, you're going to want to have to find masking tape that is the perfect width that matches your, your Sikaflex. It's going to be tricky, but I guess if that's the, that could be the least of your worries too, you know, it's not a huge job either. And if I did that at the start, well, maybe it wouldn't be here, but for sure this next trick is you're going to see what technique and, and what process I've gone to, to waterproof the, the roof. You'll see uh, it's going to be a lot less upkeep in, in the Irish weather, and I think if I was to go with varnish anyway, it would be a lot of upkeep. Um, you know, I'd always be having to, to redo it, sand down a layer, uh, and top it up. You know, so that would have been a lot of work. And I think that uh, what you'll see later on in the video is I've gone with the best option. So I started back with belt sanding the fore cabin roof. I didn't realize that this was going to be such a time consuming job, this was quite tedious. And I take it that that was because I did about, if I remember correctly, seven layers of varnish. Of course stripping back all those layers of varnish and then the, the bondex, the layers of bondex beneath it was going to take its time. So every time after sanding, I make sure to wipe down my surface with a tack cloth using tinners and that way you just lift any residual dust. So here I'm just using a white undercoat and I'm going to pour in a cap full of, of white spirits and this way it's just going to tin the, the, the first coat of paint and uh, you'll see it'll soak in nicely. That's what you want to do, that's the idea to get it to soak into the, to the wood and really work its way into the pores. So pouring wood hardener into the, the rot affected planking here on the fore cabin roof, starboard side. Repairing any damaged or jeopardized Sikaflex here in the fore cabin roof, raking it out, making it nice and clean, and, uh, and then applying a new Sikaflex in place.
So seeing as I tinned this first coat of paint, now that it's dry, you can even still see the grain right through the paint there. And uh, that's, the, that's exactly what you want. It really means it's, it's worked its way into the pores. So I just made a quick and easy A-frame for the wheelhouse cabin roof and uh, as you'll see I'll then use another plank to, to extend that over onto the four cabin roof and that'll allow me to put a cover over the two roofs keeping off any rain just while we're working on, the, uh, on this area. Fixing the 12 volt bilge pump, pipes come off. Removing the vents to make sure I can sand up flush to them, and boy were these vents stuck down well.
So I'm just taking the belt sander quickly to the engine cover. I'll tell you this was a much quicker and easier job than the two roofs. So we actually built this using non-grade marine plywood and uh, the elements have, have taken a little bit of a toll on, on the surface of, of the plywood but uh, it's still in decent shape so we're going to get it sanded down and then get some canvas applied over it. I've lost count of how many times I've dropped tools overboard. And if it's not a job for a magnet, it's, uh, it's time to dive in with the, the swim shorts and goggles. Second coat of undercoat on the wheelhouse roof. So after researching what options I had for sealing the roofs, I decided my best option was to go with canvas. So the canvas I, I went with was a 10 ounce double duck 100% cotton canvas. I adhered it to the deck using gesso, which is an art glue that they use for priming canvas to take oil paint. So Bob Emser over at the Art of Boat Building YouTube channel, he shows you about this technique and uh, he has built sculptures, you know, he's, he's fabricated sculptures using uh, the canvas and the gesso art glue. Um, and it's just incredible that today that they're still going strong and, uh, and that is a true uh, test of time. Um, so definitely check out Bob's channel. Bob Emser is a, a wealth of knowledge and a shipwright that you can definitely, we can all learn from. And uh, thank you for your for your expertise. Um, you'll definitely enjoy his channel. So here I'm removing the hardwood trim that runs along the the windshield. And you've got it in, in three different parts. And funny enough, there's actually one and that is done in, in two two parts for some reason. It's joined, uh, which is, is quite unusual. Maybe they, they didn't have a, a long enough piece and they were using offcuts. But anyway, so I, I took this up so that I could I can properly assess the, the rotten timber um, on the starboard side uh, at the bottom of that windshield. Uh, I can properly treat the roof planking. Also then I will get this nice and cleaned up. I can get plenty of uh, resin in there as well. Hard, hard, wood hardener and, and resin to, to really treat it and make sure it's a barrier to stop any any water getting in there, rainwater working its way in in the, in the future. And again, this trim will be put back in place. I will, I will reuse it. It's all in, in great nick. I'll just clean off uh, all the old Sikaflex um, or the old sealant, uh, whatever sealant was used. And, uh, and then uh, this will be also used to, to tack down and hold down the canvas that will be going in place on this four cabin roof. I'm removing the wooden trim on the port and starboard side of the wheelhouse cabin. This is the same thing as what I did with the, with the four cabin. I, re I replaced it uh, with some old teak uh, furniture, actually it was old teak wood from uh, furniture that was gonna be thrown out that I got my hands on. And uh, it was a nice way to get that recycled and I got plenty of little different spurious sizes left um, stacked away. So I'll get that cut down on the table saw and get that in there. So as I remove it, you'll see that uh, you can actually see the edge grain of the plywood of the cabin sides at least now i can really sleep easy and rest easy at night, at night knowing that that won't uh, water won't work its way in there or it won't spring a leak so below deck so funny enough while i was actually removing these pieces of timber i noticed that one was pine and one was teak timber so it just goes to show you that this is probably the exact thing that was leaked it gave out over the years in the, in the past and and it was uh, had to be had to be restored so 
and I'm gonna do a good job and make sure it's not gonna leak anytime soon. So here at these rotten planks on the roof, uh, the four cabin roof where it meets the, uh, the wheelhouse, plywood, windshield, I scraped out as much kind of old funky timber as I could uh, without going through, through the planks because you know if you poked your finger through there, it would, it would go right through. It wouldn't, you wouldn't need too much force. I know the real thing to do here would be to replace these, this planking. I mean, I wouldn't have to worry about even doing the full length of the planks, seeing as uh, this is going to be covered in canvas. I could just do a butt join on, on, a, on a truss or on a, a brace below. You know, I want to move on to bigger and more important jobs. So this, uh, for now, is going to be, uh, I'm going to stabilize the, the, the planking, the, the rot. I will stop the leak, of course, um, and, and stop it from getting any worse. So I'm going to stabilize the timber, I'm going to get plenty of wood hardener into it, as you see, I even put so much wood, it drank up so much wood hardener, I walked in the evening and walked down in below deck, uh, into the living quarters and noticed that where, right where my bed was, I had uh, wood hardener uh, on my pillow, so that's not, uh, wasn't, wasn't very fun to witness, and then followed up with plenty of resin, I got resin in there and built that up, so it's, it's pretty much, uh, it's certainly waterproof. So I made sure to dry fit the teak trim first and then once I was happy that it was fitting in place, the size was good, I, I then secured it in place using Sikaflex 291i.
So after transferring my marks for the teak trim, I ran it off with a table saw to cut it down to size. And then it was time to break out the hand plane and to really get accurate with the angles. So of course I made sure to blunt the heads of the pins before driving them into the timber and this way you prevent the risk of, of or you decrease the risk of uh, splitting your timber. But um, as you'll see here on the port side I actually split three of these, uh, sorry two of these uh, lengths of trim and I had to make up a third one, you know, third time's the charm right, third time lucky. Um, but not after not after injuring myself first as you'll see when I remove some staples from this from this timber I'm recycling but um, yeah always aim the tools away from you So to really secure it in place, I went with brass pins and you will not believe how many stores I had to go to to find brass pins and even still these pins are not brass because it, says bra it may say brass on the label but if you look closely when you're hammering these in place or, or hitting them in place, uh, I noticed that the color was chipping off the, off the head, the, the head of the pin and uh, so guys make sure you don't get caught out like I do. Um, even though I was careful, I still got caught. Like, I, I can't believe it. They say brass, and they're not brass. They're just coated, and um, they're just coated in a, in a paint. Or yeah, so don't get caught out like I do. I just hope that there's. I, I put plenty of, of varnish in afterwards into the hole, and so I don't want moisture to get in because the ones up the bow looks like there's some sort of reaction, uh, which I can't uh, explain. But uh, either that or, or water got in and uh, started, they started rusting because there's some sort of black showing through the varnish and it's spreading through the wood. It, it just doesn't make sense. But um, let's, uh, let's get to that next. So here's that roll of 100% cotton canvas, double duck, 24 meters. So I'm spreading the gesso glue nice and evenly over the engine cover and then laying down the canvas, making sure to pull it taut. I did this in, in half first so that I wouldn't have too much, uh, too much applied, too much glue applied and that way I can, I can make sure it's uh, squeegeed nicely once I lay it down nice and taut, get out any creases. 
and then I can apply the next half with glue and again do the same thing again uh, same thing stretching it nice and tight making sure you get all those creases out of it and you don't want any creases um, and then you can then staple along the sides and that's that's what I did make sure it was secured well again these staples aren't stainless steel and they will rust but for now it's just to get it in place I'll take it out before any rust rusting occurs um, and I will cut it nice and cut it, cut it flush the engine cover of course uh, and maybe put a nice little bit of trim underneath to, to really secure the, the ends of the canvas. So here I'm just using car fillers to fill any void in the resin or, or where the plywood had chipped out and near those teak, uh, teak strips that I, I put in place or the teak trim. And I really don't like using this, this fillers. Um, and even shipwrights will tell you the same, they don't like using it for boat work uh, much. Um, but I can't find, I can't seem to source any good fairing compound, marine fairing compound that you'd use for filling, uh, filling any voids in, in timber. Um, so if anybody knows of one in Ireland that is uh, worth getting their hands on, do let me know in the comments below, uh, that would be much uh, appreciated. So I'm applying Epiphane's varnish on the teak trim and that'll make it shine nicely, it'll really make it pop and it'll look the, the part now with the, the same teak trim up the on the fore cabin front and um, yeah I'm applying it with a pretty big brush here, it's definitely a little bit excessive but uh, it's what I have at hand and, um, and I will make sure to uh, get another use out of it. Applying the gesso glue over the wheelhouse cabin roof, making sure to use a notch trowel here that'll spread it nice and even. I also made sure to wet the edges of the canvas. Uh, as After I applied it, I made sure that the edges were wet as well, that there was no voids or no gaps in, in, the, in the canvas there towards the edges. That will be uh, one of the most important areas to make sure that it's sealed, that you don't want that lifting. Um, so that is something to, to make sure it is sealed well. Uh, again, just make sure you, you use your notch trowel well, that uh, it's spread evenly and with the notch trowel you're going to guarantee that.
So the next day I made sure to cut the canvas nice and flush the whole way around the, ca the wheelhouse cabin roof. And, uh, and also I noticed this damselfly eating a caddisfly, which is both fascinating and horrific, but I, I made a good use of uh, stock footage here. So I'm using Santex 10 year exterior gloss paint for the canvas and I will use probably three layers of this, three coats of this um, and what I was surprised was for the engine cover um, it took one full tin of, of undercoat and then of course when you're putting on the, the top coat it was using much much less and I was very surprised but uh, of course you can see now that it's filling the weave and it's going to take less and less with each coat. Um, so I'm very happy to see that it's really soaking it up and uh, and that is going to be a nice water barrier. So the ideal idea is to apply plenty of coats that uh, you're not going to see the weave of the canvas. It's going to be nice and smooth, um, of course just above the, the, the weave and then as the years go on you know you need to top that up. You just sand it down to the just to the weave are just shy of the weave and then you can top it up with your, your coats a top coat and it keeps for easy upkeep again then for the decks we'll canvas the decks of course you don't need to use as much top coat you know you don't want to make it slippy you don't want it to be too smooth so you could leave the weave or ideally i think what i'll do and um, because i don't want the weave to fill with any dirt or grit and um, so the real thing i think would be the best option would it be to do your top coat but then also put in some non-skid and that can be added to the paint and that could be the, the right job. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. Click that notification icon to get notified whenever I upload new episodes. I have a PayPal link in the description below if you feel like supporting my project there. I would really appreciate if you could share this episode with friends and family who might also be interested in my videos and could also learn something or in return can share their knowledge so where I can take away something and, uh, and improve my work. And as always guys, stay productive and have fun creating. Uh.